two two slide uh, all together. You can make. I have two screens. It's in dual mode. You can take it. First. Is this yeah, fine? Yeah, it's fine. Okay. I know. Is it good? No. 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 In dual mode. Um, you you have to open for and then share. Remove that next slide and notes portion. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. The slide oh. so yes. Yeah, yeah. Is this fine? Yes. Yeah, this is fine. Okay, sorry. No, it's, it's not okay. It's not fine. It's not on. Yes, it's fine now. Is it fine now? Yes. Yeah, I'm sorry for those technical problems. It always happens um, with presentation. Uh, I think I'm uh, well. First of all, thank you for inviting me for a presentation at this uh, very interesting uh, meeting. It was good um, uh, to see some uh, cassava work and cassava viruses uh, work. Uh, I haven't seen for some time. At least for me. Um, so good to meet um, and thank you for the invitation. Um, I think I'm a bit in the same situation as uh, Stefan before. Um, I think uh, people have presented uh, uh, the PATO systems for, well, uh, on several occasions of so several introduction slides. Uh, of course, I always have um, those slides in. Um, I will go through very quickly um, to explain um, the importance uh, of uh, cassava viruses. If I can manage to change my slides, no. Do you see it changing? No, no, okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. Okay. So um, I, I'll div I divided my presentation in, in five parts. Um, um, as I said before, I will briefly, very quickly go through the, the path of the system. I think it's been introduced uh, on several occasions. Um, I will then take, talk about uh, a method we have established uh, in my lab uh, called CyberSeq uh, to, to profile a uh, full genome of, of Jimny viruses and other uh, viral particles as well. Uh, I will explain some work we've been doing over the last uh, 10, 15 years and coming to an end uh, in the last two years uh, in terms of evaluation, though we are still doing some additional work on RNA interference against Jimny viruses. I talked briefly about hybrid uh, plant Jimny virus molecules. Uh, and then I will also talk about CRISPR-Cas. Uh, it's a very trendy topic, as we all know. Uh, to engineer uh, or to try to engineer Jiminy virus um, resistance. Again, I don't need to go through those slides, as I said before, very important disease, uh, CMD, major impact, uh, and the need to find solutions uh, for uh, cassava, though, as it was presented by Stefan before and by others uh, before, uh, we do have natural resistance, which is already quite helpful, as we could see before. Um, at least that's a very efficient way uh, to deliver uh, virus-resistant plants uh, to the farmers. I don't need to talk about the overlap and, and CMD, but it's maybe important to have, I think, again, uh, going back to the previous presentation from Stefan, uh, the importance of, of bringing um, a resistance to both diseases, especially in Eastern and Central Africa. Uh, one could expect, can expect that it will be uh, expanding uh, in the future. Uh, what is maybe more important uh, in, in the view of the work we are trying to develop, or you will, as you will see also in terms of assessment of virus resistance, or I should say engineered virus resistance, is the diversity. I, I put some uh, old, let's say quite old seminal papers from, from uh, uh, Claude here, um, looking at the diversity of viruses uh, in Africa. Again, I don't want to go too much into the details, but we do have variation in the virus. Uh, populations, different species, and this is quite important as you will see uh, when it comes to um, to make uh, virus resistant plants. Uh, quite importantly, uh, we discussed about the pandemics uh, in the past uh, occurring in Uganda and other places, Burundi, uh, where uh, recombination, which is a, a very efficient way of uh, evolution for Jiminy viruses, and therefore calling for uh, good profiling methods in order to very precisely profile the evolution of the viruses uh, in the field. So when it comes to Jimny viruses, then we want to um, um, to profile uh, viruses in the in the plants. 
Um, what we are very interested now in, into is to, is to be able to, uh, to, to detect a variation in those viruses that are replicated in the nucleus, in the uh, and we want to detect any kind of variation or be able to, to see any kind of, of um, viral genomes that are emerging in a population, especially when you uh, impose some kind of, of uh, pressure, selection pressure uh, on, those, uh, on those viruses. Uh, as it was shown before, you can expect that uh, every time you, you uh, implement or you deploy some uh, resistance uh, in the field, these are some consequences on the viral population, and you can expect uh, that will um, that um, resistance will eventually be uh, uh, broken, uh, and that's also a, a cycle that maintains all of us in the field, uh, at least with a job, uh, as uh, there is always something to do with viruses, given their uh, rapid evolution. So when, when we started to work on viruses um, uh, 15 years ago, uh, this was work started in, in Zurich, at, in, in Switzerland. Uh, we were very much interested in, in developing virus resistant. We were a plant biotech lab, and therefore uh, we very much focused on producing transgenic cassava uh, to engineer uh, virus resistance. But then when it came to uh, evaluate, as I said before, those uh, resistances, we also realized that uh, we would also benefit from being able to um, nicely profile or detail profile uh, those um, Gemini virus population. And with the emergence of new sequencing technologies, um, we had uh, very nice collaboration with the sequencing um, service uh, there in Zurich. Uh, and therefore we discussed, we decided to implement uh, some new technologies for uh, sequencing uh, the virus. So as I said before, um, what you see um, in, in, uh, in sequencing or conventional sequencing uh, papers uh, nowadays, sequencing uh, in order to characterize a virus population. And the use of those short read sequencing allows after reconstruction to reconstruct a, a full viral genome. As you can imagine, all those small pieces that are being sequenced it is a challenge to actually assemble them uh, into, um, into a, a full viral genome, or at least might inaccurately combine small reads together. And therefore, you don't see uh, the reality in terms of virus population. You only get, um, let's say, um, an overview of the number of mutation variation you have uh, per nucleotide on this uh, virus genome. So we're very much interested uh, to look at, at, um, at developing a method that would give access to the full uh, genome. This has been done in the past. Huh? So, of course, by PCR, uh, amplify the genome. Uh, you can also do the, uh, the conventional RCA, as you all know, uh, doing the digestion and then cloning and sequencing by Sanger sequencing. And this gives you a full genome. Uh, as you will see later, uh, it has some disadvantages. It's quite tedious work. It's quite expensive. Uh, you need to, to develop. Uh, uh, you need to, to go through several steps uh, to eventually sequence the full genome. So we thought that with long read sequencing that was emerging with uh, different technologies, uh, including um, Oxford Nanopore and PacBio, uh, we thought there is something to do there uh, in order to develop uh, sequencing. So as I said before, there is always uh, there is a kind of a, a dilemma when you start looking at profiling viruses. Um, either uh, you look at something that is more in-depth, so if you do a small reads, uh, uh, short reads, uh, sequencing with Illumina, for example, you can go quite in-depth in terms of characterization of the viruses, but of course then you don't have the very accurate uh, profiling of those viruses uh, in, the, in the plants. So we decided uh, to combine all the methods actually, or, or at least quite established method, as I said before, the RCA with the, the Phi29 uh, enzyme allows replication or multiplication of circular molecules. Uh, we see the importance of that uh, later. And also to try to, to focus on the virus, on the Gemini viruses. We know the size ranging between 2.5 and 3 KB. So it is actually another mean actually to enrich uh, the samples in order not to sequence a lot of unrelated molecules, or at least molecules that are not directly linked to the, to the virus, uh, and that is maybe of less importance, or at least uh, not the focus uh, in those kind of studies. I won't go through the, all the, the, the different steps we have established, uh, but uh, in order to achieve uh, a full genome sequencing, we have to go through several enzymatic steps in order to generate a very long uh, molecule that reflects it reflects actually a multimere, an amplification of a full genome of the Gemini virus, the V29. And this full 
molecule can be fully sequenced. Actually, these long molecules can be fully sequenced now in one stretch uh, in the PacBio uh, platform, and gives you this gives you now a, a long stretch of several multimers, actually a multimers of of Jimmy virus. Uh, sequences. So in order to access, uh, again, I will not go too much into the details. I don't think it's the purpose here, but uh, basically when you, you generate these very long molecules, you have several copies of your of your virus here in the in these long molecules. And we had to develop some kind of an algorithm that would allow us to what we call now deconcatenate uh, these long molecules to generate one full uh, genome of, of, the, of the virus. Of course, it allows us as well by doing this, um, uh, by comparing those several sequences, to basically get a consensus and to further increase the accuracy of the sequencing, though I have to mention that PacBio already reaches a very high accuracy on those very long reads uh, that are generated. So we developed this Deconcat uh, uh, software that allows us now to detect those repeats, or at least every time the sequence is repeated in these long molecules. Again, I will not go into the details, but this gives you in the end as an output several long several molecules uh, that are full genome of the Gemini virus and we can confirm that they are uh, circular molecules because we have several copies of this in this multimeric uh, sequence and then we can start to look uh, uh, at, at, the, at the profile what you see here the output of the of the of the um, of the analysis you see that after deconcatenation you find a lot of those molecules that are falling into this range uh, of the Gemini virus genome uh, size uh, around this 2.8 kb in this case, uh, which is what the, which is the output we want to uh, to achieve. <clears throat> so we have now a very good uh, platform where we can basically uh, feed in with our full protocol. We can feed in our samples and extract now full genome. We get several copies. So if you look at papers that have used very conventional methods of cloning, uh, they would publish. I don't know, 50 or 100 full genomes in their studies, we are able now to reach 1,000 or 2,000 or even more full genome where we are for sure we can clearly identify the full genome of the, of the Gemini virus. We've done this, um, this comparison uh, table here also to give uh, some kind of an idea of the advantage. Uh, so we try to estimate the cost uh, per genome if you use a conventional single sequencing or if you use Illumina or Cytosec. If you look at those two, we are quite comparable in terms of cost per full genome. But of course, you have reaching a fully accurate um, genome with the Cytosec uh, method using PacBio while with the, with the Illumina, you still get some kind of chimeric uh, assembly of, of small reads and you are never sure that you get uh, a combination of those different SNPs. If you look at variation, the nucleotide variation, uh, you're never sure about the precise composition uh, of, your, uh, of your virus population. So we believe that this, um, this method is, can be very useful, uh, especially when we start to evaluate uh, natural resistance or emergence of, of new isolates that would break resistance, for example. We believe that such an approach, uh, focusing on full genome uh, uh, sequencing uh, will be uh, interesting. I will show you later that also in, in the part four here of the presentation uh, that you also start to find other new interesting uh, features that need further characterization, but at least this tool is quite useful uh, to find uh, new uh, biological uh, functions of, of the virus when it infects uh, the plant. So let me move now um, to uh, the topic of uh, engineer resistance. Uh, quite some time ago, we published this in 2009. Uh, we had developed in Zurich at ETH, we had developed transgenic cassava expressing airpin RNA, double strand RNA against the AC1, the rep uh, sequence of the Gemini of the cassava mosaic, uh, Gemini virus um, here in this case, uh, the Nigerian uh, isolate. And so we developed transgenic plants expressing high level of those uh, airpin double strand RNA and generating a high level of small RNAs that are present in the plant before infection. And we could demonstrate uh, by challenging uh, with different methods, uh, with grafting, uh, with agroinfection, uh, with particle bombardment, we could show or we could uh, select five transgenic lines out of eight that we initially screened that were highly resistant uh, to the uh, ACMV Nigerian strain, I should specify here. So um, we're quite confident. I think I'm also showing you on the next slide. Uh, we developed several methods of evaluation that uh, over a period of five to 10 years, uh, those plants have remained uh, over several challenges of those plants 
always very resistant uh, to the to the um, ACMV. And what we also have done, uh, I think, was shown before with the brown streak, but you can also, of course, do it with the ACMV or, or Gemini viruses here. We've done grafting and we've shown as well that those highly resistant plants very quickly after bringing the infection into the into the cyan, if you perform cuttings and propagation of those cuttings very quickly, those viruses, uh, those ACMV uh, particles, actually genomes are actually disappearing. So we are very confident that this is very good trending lines to be tested, very good approach, as we thought. Uh, in based on the on the work we're doing uh, in the in the lab. So uh, through collaboration uh, with uh, with people in uh, in Kakamega in in in, uh, in Kenya, we decided to bring those plants to to Kenya uh, to the field and perform uh, an assay uh, a field trial uh, with those transgenic lines. We're quite confident, given their high resistance, that this will go uh, very well. As I've shown you before. Um, and it's been explained by several uh, speakers today, uh, diversity is important uh, of Casa Gimini viruses in Africa, uh, especially here in Eastern Africa. Uh, I think it's a paper from James here uh, showing the, 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 um, the diversity of, of Gimini viruses uh, in this part of, of Africa. So we know we are in a kind of hotspot for, for diversity. Uh, and that's actually something we want to, of course, we want to test uh, with those plants to see whether this is something that is, can be valuable uh, for farmers. So what, what you see here is actually the trial uh, before a hailstorm that we had to face uh, in, the, in the field. And actually initially those transgenic lines that I was showing you before, are performing pretty well if you compare to the to the wild type uh, control or the the transit control uh, you see that infection uh, or at least symptoms should say uh, are very low or non-existent actually uh, non-existing actually in the uh, in the in the transients that are in the field however after this hailstorm as you know um, uh, breaking or pruning uh, cassava uh, that is infected is usually doing a very good revival for the viruses and you see that after the hailstorm you start to see very strong symptoms like not only on the controls but also in those highly resistant transit plants so we're very interested to um, to profile um, what is actually happening in those plants. Why do they seem to perform as well as we expected uh, from the lab work uh, in the field uh, at the initial stage? And when you, when you get the hailstorm later on, you start to see a very high infection rate. Uh, at least symptom-wise, uh, you see this is very dramatic. So we looked at the viruses. Uh, we use uh, the methods I presented before. Uh, to profile the viruses uh, and we looked a bit at the, um, at the homology between uh, the airpin RNA that we are producing in this in those transgenic lines and uh, the viruses that we find uh, the population of the viruses that we find here uh, in those transgenic lines versus the control line and what you see here you see that in the control lines actually we do have um, ACMV uh, in the field it's actually a mixture of ACMV and ESMV as you will see later uh, we do find a very good homology uh, between uh, the airpin RNA and uh, the viruses that you uh, find here uh, in the in the in the plant, when you look at the transit lines, you start to see that the homology is, is very low, and this actually reflects the fact that uh, the viruses have been selected in those transit lines, and actually you have a, a shift of the viral population from uh, ACMV into uh, ESMV, as you will see in one of the of the next uh, slides. So we can also look at the at the identity with the small. Uh, with the transient derived uh, small RNAs that we can actually uh, uh, predict. I think it was shown, it's shown here in the, in the next slide. And you see indeed that you have very low mismatch between the virus that you find in the virus in the plant and the, and the air pin that we use, the sequence we use, as compared to the, the, the transient lines where you see clearly that this air pin RNA is actually imposing some kind of selection on the virus. And as a consequence of that, you see now that the virus is changing, or at least the population, I should not say the virus is changing, actually the population is being reshaped into uh, having more of the ESCMV, or at least a divergent uh, sequence as compared uh, to the initial sequence. It's actually nicely illustrated here. When you see here with the control, you see that there's a mixture of population of ACMV or ACMV related uh, um, uh, particles. Uh, and a mixture of ESCMV, while you see in the transient now when you profile this, this um, population, virus population, you see now that there's a shift towards ESCMV. So this shows that our strategy um, uh, targeting actually ACMV initially, at least the, the, the strategy that we had developed initially, uh, was focusing on developing resistance against ACMV Nigeria strain, uh, isolate, 
um, we see now that those plans cannot stand. So it also means if you go back into the, the, what I presented before, it also means that a few mismatches in those small RNAs uh, derived from the air pin RNA are sufficient uh, to break resistance or at least not to be uh, susceptible anymore uh, to the resistance that is displayed by the, by the plant. So um, that's, a, that's a very good finding for us uh, because I think that can have the, the, the feel. It's not very good, of course, in, the, in, the, in terms of deployment of changing strategies, though uh, we feel that we could still uh, work on that. But at least I think we, it's a key message uh, that the community needs to take that this uh, airpin uh, RNA-derived resistance against Gemini viruses, when it's facing relative high uh, diversity in the virus population, is not likely to be something that will stand uh, in the field. I also mentioned the, the, before the, the importance uh, of, of the technology we developed here. And what, what you also see here is that by developing sequencing of circular molecules, you not only find uh, viruses, but you also find host molecules that we are currently investigating that seems to be expressed uh, upon vi uh, a virus infection and for which we think might actually play a role uh, in the virus uh, biology. Actually, I should also mention that in parallel to this, I think this was started sh shortly after um, our papers uh, uh, reporting this uh, resistance uh, in lab or in greenhouse resistance against ACMV. We had also started some collaboration, uh, former collaborators, uh, Michael Pugin and Thomas Horn in Basel. They had developed some airpin construct in a collaboration with Indian uh, colleagues uh, um, in, in Tamil Nadu. Uh, they had basically uh, studied the diversity uh, of, of the virus uh, in, in India. And they had come up with a suggestion of at least with some construct that in, in, in their view, at least in their analysis, would be able to target uh, uh, quite the large, let's say the diversity, I should not say the large, but the diversity of the Jimny viruses that you find in cassava uh, in Kerala and in uh, Tamil Nadu. So we, as in collaboration with uh, Dr. Sheila and, 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 and Makesh at CTCRI, uh, we also engage uh, into developing uh, transgenic lines, what you see here. Uh, so we've done this in the in the model cultivar 6444, but we've done this also in H165. So this is still ongoing work, uh, but we've generated several transgenic lines. And uh, well, knowing the, the limitation we had faced before, uh, since this has been done in the last two years now, um, um, knowing the, the fact that we had encountered this problem in the field, uh, we decided to directly go with field uh, infection. So we collected some uh, virus infected cassava uh, in, in Kerala, and we use this as an inoculum using also white fly transmission in order to evaluate several of the strange clients that you see uh, here. This is here H165, an important uh, genotype in India, and this is 6444, I should mention here. And you see that uh, if you look at the ones with no symptoms, very limited symptoms, uh, a few lines seems to, seems to stem out. Uh, however, I have to admit or I have to say that um, on the contrary to what we've seen before with the Nigerian strain, um, we had engineered resistance for, um, we didn't see a, a, such a high percentage of immune plants against, against the virus. Uh, so though it displays clearly, it displays clearly some resistance uh, against this mixture of, of SLCMV that is present in the, in the field inoculated, field infected uh, samples. Um, we don't see such a strong resistance. This is still ongoing work. Uh, we'll continue to try to assess those, those plants and potentially some of those lines will be also tested uh, in collaboration with CTCRI. Uh, we know now the limitations, so I think it's also reshaping also the way uh, we conceive uh, the potential of RNAi against Gemini viruses, I should say against cassava Gemini uh, viruses. I mentioned before that Looking at um, having this technology to sequence uh, circular DNA uh, um, molecules uh, focusing on Gemini viruses is also a very interesting uh, uh, technique for us. Uh, we've published uh, in details this, this technology and we're initially very interested uh, in, in looking at, at the virus particle that we are taking out uh, from, this, uh, from this sequencing approach. But we are also um, now very interested uh, in looking at, at other sequences that might uh, be released or might be produced uh, by this approach. And as I said before, we are finding a lot uh, of uh, extra uh, chromosomal uh, circular DNA from the host. And we are currently investigating uh, what is the meaning of those molecules uh, during uh, infection. We, for this purpose, we're actually using a, a more model uh, pathosystems. We're using the Arabidopsis and cabbage leaf curl uh, virus. 
uh, in order to to profile uh, the virus, to look at the evolution of the virus in this in the system, so diversity of the virus in the system, but also to look at uh, what kind of molecule, circular molecule, we are getting uh, out of this. And uh, Quite interestingly, you might have seen this paper from uh, Gianpaolo Accotto from Torino, uh, I think two or three years back uh, in NatureCom, uh, where they report, I think it was with the uh, beach uh, Gemini virus, uh, they report hybrids, uh, molecules between the virus and uh, host uh, DNA. This is something that we are starting to provide with all technology. So we are able to detect indeed some molecules uh, that we call hybrids combining Jimny virus sequences and whole sequences. We don't know the function of those. Uh, we are looking into that, uh, but we think that's also part of the characterization we want to, to provide. We also think that um, defective molecules from, from Jimny viruses might also be uh, very interesting to further investigate, not only from a resistance, plant resistance point of view, but also looking at how uh, viruses might be able to circumvent, uh, circumvent this uh, resistance. I think I'm a bit uh, late, so I'm, I will go quickly on those uh, viruses, but just to report that we, uh, when we look at those hybrid molecules, we do find preferentially some of, of the Jimny virus sequences associated uh, with those um, host DNA. We don't, again, we don't have the, the, the knowledge, so we, we, don't have, we don't have elements to interpret that at the moment. We are further profiling the, 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 the patho systems in order to try to understand why uh, host DNA is being combined and concatenated actually with Jimny virus uh, sequences. Okay, and then uh, let me uh, fin finish this presentation with the, the CRISPR-Cas uh, approach that you might have seen as well, we, that we, we, we published, um, uh, I think a year or two years ago. Um, you might have seen uh, back in 2015 uh, as uh, the CRISPR-Cas field was uh, booming, uh, with people have started to use uh, CAS, CRISPR-Cas and seen potential for many different applications. And one of them, of course, uh, knowing that CRISPR-Cas is actually able to target uh, DNA uh, sequences, actually can also target RNA, but in this case, the Cas9, you're targeting the DNA. Uh, people have imagined that um, you can actually engineer resistance against uh, Gemini viruses uh, using this system. We actually started this work back in 2000, well, before these papers came out. So we also, we, we, we had also seen, uh, we were also interested to test the potential of this system uh, to, to engineer resistance against uh, cassava Gemini viruses and had produced uh, transgenic cassava expressing uh, the, the guide RNA uh, targeting different region of the Gemini viruses as well as expressing the Cas9 in order to try to uh, generate um, uh, resistant uh, cassava. This is what you see here. Again, I will not go into the detail, but you see a profiling of the different plants, looking at expression of the Cas9, looking at expression of the guide RNA, but also what you do initially is also to select the most efficient guide RNA to target, uh, to target your DNA uh, against, in this case, the Gemini virus uh, sequence. Surprisingly, uh, when we look at the reports back in 2015 from Nature Plants, it looks very promising. At least uh, people have reported that this can be used uh, to engineer resist resistance against Gemini viruses, against DNA viruses. Uh, in all hands, uh, we didn't find any uh, resistance. So um, uh, not a single line actually, as the contrary to what I showed you before, the RNAi uh, could display actually any resistance against the CRISPR-Cas9 strategy. Um, there are still ongoing argument that using several guide RNA that might be, I should also mention that we use a single guide RNA in this case, uh, that might be sufficient or this might be more efficient uh, to engineer resistance, but at least in all hands, uh, we didn't see anything significant as compared to the, uh, to the, um, uh, the, the wild type and transgenic uh, controls. Quite importantly, what we could see or quite interesting what we could see is that uh, very quickly we saw uh, emergence of, of mutations uh, that would actually uh, avoid any um, activity of the Cas9 combined the guide RNA uh, in against the virus. So we see appearance of, of mutation in the population, the virus population, uh, that seems to abolish activity or that do abolish actually, because this is something we have further tested. We could show now that the mutation that's emerging in this population, again, using uh, uh, profiling uh, of the virus, um, could actually abolish uh, activity of the CRISPR-Cas. So 
or point in this case is uh, is two is, is two two essential points from this work uh, I should report is the fact that CRISPR Cas9 is not sufficiently active against the, the uh, Gimini virus infection. I think there's too high level of virus that is replicating, and the processing uh, the processivity of the of the Cas9 with the Galen is not sufficient to really address the virus that is the Gimini virus that is uh, uh, replicating in the in the in the plant. But also quite importantly, um, it's also tend to promote uh, mutation on the virus, evolution of the virus, and could trigger actually emergence of new uh, mutant uh, viruses in such a system. So this is what uh, we had uh, reported. Uh, there was no uh, uh, function, particular change uh, with this mutation, but quite surprisingly, we could see uh, on several full genome, we could see the appearance uh, of this mutation. So we think that there's also kind of conservation uh, in the mutation that are appearing uh, with uh, with this um, with this technology. So, um, to summarize um, uh, this work I was presenting today, uh, it is uh, in our views uh, we feel that um, uh, also from from the work that was presented in, in previous presentation, uh, we feel that uh, better profiling uh, virus population being in in cassava or in other crop species uh, is very important, especially now when we start to. Uh, to dig into uh, natural resistance uh, to try to see whether there is any um, if we can further um, uh, increase our knowledge on the virus biology by better profiling uh, virus population we think this is something that is very key um, and we also what we can also conclude from this presentation that the transgenic approach is at least against gimini viruses though it has shown some some very good prospects uh, i'm thinking of the uh, of the bean gimini viruses for example work uh, done in uh, 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 by Embrapa from, from Francisco Aragao, for example, in, in Brazil, uh, seems to have good prospects. Um, uh, it seems uh, that when we, we engage into a project to engineer resistance against Gemini viruses, uh, diversity of the virus is something that is very key uh, to consider uh, in places where diversity is very low, like we talk about the bean Gemini virus in, in Brazil, uh, that might be sufficient to use RNAi against the Gemini virus. We seen that this is very active, very efficient uh, to generate resistance against an isolate. Uh, or ever, uh, when you're facing diversity of the virus, we can see that very minute, very small changes, uh, mutations uh, between the, the, the RNA and, uh, and, uh, and, the, and the target sequence in the Gini virus is sufficient actually to break resistance. So that's something uh, to be considered definitely uh, when we think about prospect of, of uh, uh, virus engineering. Uh, to be also fair uh, to what has been presented before, um, we also see that natural resistance, when we very quickly deploy uh, breeding approaches, uh, is a very efficient way to, to bring uh, resistance, uh, natural resistance or resistance to farmers. You also don't have to go through uh, the hurdles of, um, uh, of bio safety uh, regulation. I have to acknowledge uh, several people and collaborators, uh, some funding as well. Uh, and I'm taking some questions if some people have. Um, I hope you could hear me well. Uh, despite uh, some problems at the beginning of this presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Harvey. Uh, 